Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jay Get That Fit Friend, and today we're gonna to be talking about Converse, and more specifically, using Converse for lifting, if they're good in 2023 or if there are better options. I get a lot of questions about Converse for training, so I wanted to talk about some of the big talking points that I regularly get asked on on videos. Everything is timestamped down below, so please jump around accordingly and get the info you need, get out of here and go get to lifting. But that being said, let's dive in. So there are typically three reasons why lifters will reach for Converse for their training. The first is that they offer a flat sole construction. So this model has a zero millimeter heel toe drop. This means that when your foot is in a Converse, it is sitting flat. So if you do like flat shoes for training, Converse can be a great option to explore. The second reason is that they offer a good level of stability. So typically with Converse, their soles won't compress a ton and you can even take out the insole of your models to get even closer to the ground and you have a nice midsole material that is not going to compress easily under heavy weight. This is why when you look at old school power lifters from the 80s, 90s, and even the early thousands, a lot of them will wear Converse because their overall stability. You have people squatting and deadlifting 700 plus in Converse, so you know the stability is going to be pretty good in these shoes. The third reason is for their overall style and price point. So at $60 USD, generally for most Converse models, you can get a decent shoe for training, but you also get a model that you can wear out and about. So if you love the way Converse look, especially like the old school Converse Chuck Taylor All-Stars, that is a big win of a Converse. Plus over the last few decades, we know they work in the gym. So you are getting a shoe for a decent price point that you can wear pretty much all day and then to go train in and it's going to work pretty dang well. But now let's talk about why Converse may fall short for lifting. All right, so now let's cover three reasons why a Converse might fall short for lifting in 2023. Now, this is not to say you cannot wear Converse. I like Converse for lifting. I have worn them for many a years, but I do think there are better options on the market, which I will hit on later in this video. But three reasons why I think a Converse can fall short at times is number one, they're overall width. So in the toe box of a Converse, you have a pretty aggressive taper. So if you have a wider foot, or if you just want more room in your shoe's toe box, let the toe display when you're squatting, deadlifting, and just training in general, this is not going to be your best option. The second reason is with their construction, they're not going to be the best shoe for more versatile training. So with the Converse, you'll typically be a little bit more limited, like static strength work. So think things like powerlifting or bodybuilding sessions. You're not going to be able to do sessions where you're going to be blending things like power cleans with jumping, etc. Obviously, that is where this shoe is going to fall short. So if you want to model for just straight up lifting, a Converse will be fine. But the moment you start getting a little bit more versatile with your training, that's where a Converse is going to start to fall short. So the third reason is the most specific. And this is not going to be a point that necessarily affects everybody. But outside of their width and outside of their shortcomings for versatile training, with a Converse Chuck Taylor All-Star, you have a stack height of about an inch. The stack height is the amount of height that separates the foot from the floor or the material that separates the foot from the floor. So you can look at the sole of a Converse and it's a lot different than something like a minimalist shoe. So for powerlifters and folks who really want to niche down on their deadlift performance, you might want to find a shoe with a lower stack height as that can make you a little bit more mechanically efficient in that movement. So again, this is not going to be a point that's going to necessarily be applicable to everybody. And honestly, if you're a beginner intermediate, I would not stress this at all. But if you are a powerlifter or somebody who's getting a little bit more niche with your training and more specifically your deadlifts, you might want to find an option that has a lower stack height because that can have a positive carryover to your performance. Another question that I get asked is, are Converse good for squats? And in short, yes, they can be. However, they can start to fall short as you get more specific with your training. Now, why can they be good for squats? First off, they have a flat construction. So if you like a flat shoe for your squatting and that style of footwear feeds really well into your squat mechanics, then a Converse can be a good option. And you also get a nice level of stability with the shoe. So two of the major reasons why folks lift in Converse in the first place can also have carryover to your squat performance in this shoe. Now, why can the shoe actually fall short for squatting? Well, for starters, once again, you're not getting the most width in your toe box. So if you do want those feet to actually splay out and grip the floor a little bit more, you might feel limited in a Converse. The second reason is long term wise, you start to have this outsole fade and it starts to get a little bit more slippery. So I don't know if you could see it on mine, but we do have like this fuzzier surface coming out from under the rubber in this outsole. So over time, this outsole will start to lose some of its traction and you'll have to replace your shoes. But that is a reason why the durability of this model can have a direct impact on squat performance because obviously you don't want a shoe that's sliding around while you're trying to squat on them. So for example, on like a wooden platform, this is a shoe that I would not reach for anymore because of this outsole tread fading. So overall, Converse can be a good shoe for squats. And I would say if you're a beginner or intermediate, once again, they will be a plenty fine shoe for your needs that I would not stress this detail a ton. However, when you start to look at the shoe from the lens of like long-term durability or width, or if you want a heel elevated shoe for your squat mechanics, 
that's where a Converse will start to fall short and you might wanna have different types of footwear to rotate in with your squat training. So outside of squats, another big question that I get is, are Converse good for deadlifts? So for most beginners and intermediate lifters, they should be a plenty fine shoe for your deadlift training. They have a nice flat sole construction, they're plenty stable, and you could take out the insole in them to get a little bit closer to the ground if you do wanna get a little bit more specific with a Converse and its performance for deadlifts, i.e. bringing down the stack height a little bit to get you closer to the ground. Honestly, Converse were the first shoe I deadlifted 500 in, so they do have a special place in my heart. Now, why can Converse start to fall short for deadlift? So there are three reasons, and you could probably already kind of guess what they are, but number one is their width. Once again, if you like to be more barefoot with your deadlift training or have more width in your shoe, this is not gonna be your best pick. Another reason is once again, this outsole tread. If you're a sumo puller and you start to have this outsole fade, you could run into slip issues. So that's another issue that I have with Converse long-term regarding their deadlift performance. And the third reason is their stack height. I think if you're somebody who really wants the niche down in your deadlift performance and get close to the ground and really try to be mechanically efficient with your pulls, this might not be the best option for you. Similar to a Vans, they're gonna give you about an inch of elevation regarding their stack height. So it's not gonna necessarily be the best option on the market when it comes to really niching down and optimizing your deadlift performance. So to wrap that all up, for most lifters who are not super specific, Converse will be just fine. I'm not scaring you away from using them, but I do think there are better options on the market in 2023, and let's cover some of those right now. All right, so two shoe options that I think are a little bit better than Converse for strength training in 2023 include number one, the Adidas, the Total, and the number two, barefoot shoes. So why I like the Total is number one, it's gonna deliver a nice flat sole construction. So if you want a flat shoe for lifting, the Total can be a great option to explore, and you have a slightly lower stack height than the Converse. So that's the second reason why I like the Total. The third reason is you have a wider toe box in this shoe with an additional midfoot strap. So if you want a flat shoe for lifting and you don't wanna go full on minimalist shoe, the Adidas, the Total, I think is a pretty unique model for that because it is built specifically for strength training, and you have a nice wide toe box in this model to accommodate toe splay, so it's gonna be wider than a Converse, which I think a lot of lifters will appreciate. The second option you could look into is a barefoot shoe. So this is the Vivo Barefoot Primus Light 3. It's one of my favorite options for strength training and lifting, but the reason why I like barefoot shoes is you get a nice level of width with them, you have a lower stack height, so you can get a little bit more ground feel in these shoes, and they have more articulation than a Converse. So a Converse can feel clunky here and there at times with its sole construction, so if you want to shoe with more flexibility and articulation, a good barefoot shoe can be awesome to explore. Now I have filmed a lot of content on barefoot shoes for lifting. I'm going to link that up there. But with barefoot shoes, do note they're going to feel very different than a Converse. So you are going to want to acclimate to them. And I have a lot of content on that as well. But the Total and a good barefoot shoe are both options that I think are a little bit better than a Converse in 2023 regarding their lifting performance. And so if you have additional questions on these models or other options that you might be looking into that are not a Converse, definitely drop a comment down below and I could help you out accordingly. All right, y'all, that wraps up this video covering the Converse and if it's still good for lifting in 2023. Hopefully this video was able to answer some of the questions that you might have had on Converse if you're thinking about switching to them or ditching yours to find other options for lifting or why you might want to look into something different. But if you have additional questions on any of the topics covered, drop a comment down below. And if you have worn Converse for training, drop some stats down below that you've hit with your Converse. So Converse were one of my first shoes for powerlifting, so they do have a special place in my heart. So I I would love to hear more about how Converse have helped you along your lifting journey. But as always, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.